family welcome to my youtube channel on this channel i share information about the canadian nursing dream i mean if you are a nurse looking to migrate to canada then this is the channel for you i also share information as some tips because i am not an immigration consultant but i share some tips on migrating to canada i also share information about health and lifestyle i mean i try to break down health information into tiny bits that everybody can relate to it can understand so even if, i'm sure you must be interested in one or more of these amazing things that the channel has to offer and you just want to take some time to you know to subscribe click that subscribe button right now share this video to your loved ones click the like button and you know drop your questions for me your comments about my hair about my clothes about my face drop there for me on the channel i'll be happy to read from you and once again if you're is my name on today's video we are going to be talking about the part two of the video i made earlier becoming rn or helping in canada all that you need to know the part two we'll be right back and while we go on this short break you want to subscribe like i said you want to click on the like button already yes i noticed people don't like my video please nae joe when you watch this video like it click on the like button it helps youtube to show this video recommend it to people that reach it please help my channel to grow thank you i'll see you guys in a I hope you subscribed i hope you click the like button so before i dwell into today's video i have a special announcement to make and this announcement is that in your quest of becoming a canadian nurse please the first thing you are going to do is not starting your nurse the first thing you need to do is to get your pr or work permit the last video i made i said it now i said it the first thing you want to do is to get your pr because a nurse is currently a victim of wasting her money on nurses and she doesn't even know anything about pr please ask me questions i'm always here for nurses trust me i got nurses any day anytime i have you guys like in my parking day fiber apart from my family my husband nurses are the nest i love nurses so feel free to ask me anything anytime or even if you're a professional or anybody looking to come to canada i love to give information subscribe you know let's you know let's rock and roll together now so when you start feeling your nerves when you start feeling your nerves, they are going to require about your uh, inquire about your first language. Please don't make mistake of putting your body. I think I put your body in my own. Why are you sure? <laughs> don't make that mistake of saying that your first language is your Your first language is what? English language. Kini boso onyubo edegesi. English language is your first language. Oh. This will make you avoid the route of having to go to IELTS academic. Yes. I had to do IELTS academic, but um, some people say, you know, Canada is kind of tricky. Some people say they give them waiver when they mention English as their first language. Some people say they did not. They didn't give them the waiver. Some people say they still ask them to do the English um, um, language um, like that. But for me, I, I, I argued with them. We went back and forth. And one thing you must know about Canada is that everybody's journey is different. Your journey is different from my journey. My journey is different from your journey. But you can learn from what I do and avoid some mistakes. You can use mine as a yardstick, like as like kind of like a guide. But you might experience something different from Nas and these things. But you can actually use um, somebody's experience as a guide. So please, that's the first thing you should know. Your your first language is English. You can actually write them a letter to if they say okay, you must do IELTS. You can write the waiver letter, yes, and get a waiver. Then you also pray. Write IELTS academic. The academic results you are presenting should be within six months range that you have written it. It means that if you write the exam in, in January now, you cannot present that results in July to NAS. No. 
that's seven months. It should be within six month period. Then you're going to present them that result. That is when they count it as valid. Even though your IELTS says it's valid for two years, they still want the results to be within six months that you have written it. Not that I've written IELTS over one year ago. Ah, since it's two years, I will give it to now. That's not collect it from you. It has to be within six months. Everything is in the handbook. That's why I said make sure to read the handbook of NAS as well as you also listen to what I'm saying. Make your own inquiry as well. Now, that's about IELTS Academy. Now, one thing you must also know is that at every point, you'll be told on what to do. So, don't worry. You're not going to get confused. If they want you to bring VOR, that's verification of um, registration with nursing council in Nigeria, you'll be asked for that. If they want you to bring a um, notary or authorization from anybody, from a lawyer, you'll be asked and you will know about that. Now, once you submit your NAS application, remember you're also going to be putting in for two nursing jurisdictions. You're putting in for RN, that is Kana. And you're also putting it for LPN, that is um, COPNA, College of Licensed Practical Nurses, Alberta. Now, everything is on the on the portal. You can apply to two nursing jurisdiction, that is um, RN and LPN. There are two basic routes that you can start your nursing at registration with in Canada, either as a registered nurse or as a licensed practical nurse. But truthfully, between you and I, you know, I tell you the truth and the fact. It is always easier for you to start your LPN before RN. So, Go for LPN. Some people say, eh, since I'm still going to do RN, let me be do working as CSW. CSW is community support worker or working as HC. But I tell you what, within one year, if you're really serious about everything, you will start working as LPN when you get to Canada. And LPN is still a nurse because it takes some people two years, three years, four years before they start working as RN. Yes. If you ask me to do bridging courses, you can take up to that. But at least as LPN, you are still a nurse. As LPN, you are a boss to HC, you are a boss to CSW, you are a boss to um, CA, you are a boss to so many people, they report to you. So it's not better to become an LPN than to be what that people ask about NAS. I'm going to be sharing that with us. Frequently ask questions about NAS. I just want to load my I just want to load my what is it called now? I just want to load my 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 internet. Now, they are frequently asked questions about NAS. You can I'm looking down because I'm trying to get information from my laptop that's straight from the NAS website. And um, apologies for the change in background. <laughs> yeah, I have to just do those adjustments because of the, the lighting I was using is going down. Yeah, so you can also choose two provinces for NAS because Canadian application may be faster your application may be faster in canada or may even drag more depending on the province you have chosen yes for example provinces i'm going to still do a video on best provinces for nurses where i'm going to highlight most of the provinces and what you expect canadian um rule of law for nursing is not a one straight road thing the provinces and what they require of you differ slightly not a lot but some of them will answer you faster than the others for example places like ontario or new brunswick may give you quicker responses according for your licensure for rn i wouldn't i've not really found out about lpn but i feel if rn will be faster then lpn should not um equally take a lot of time right yeah so you can also choose to prove the question here says can i apply to more than one province or nursing group and the answer is yes once you open a NAS account, you may apply to more than one province or nursing group. So what I'm going to require you to do is I'm going to drop the link in the below in the video where you can get all these frequently asked questions. You go there, read through, because as much as I make video, I want you to also make your research. Read through, check out the frequently asked question and what you're supposed to do and what you're expected to do. You know, and then other question people ask is how long does the application process take well usually it should take three months but with the covid and everything now they are saying that the application process may take up to 12 months to complete so while you are waiting for you to complete your application process what you can do is you can start working as csw which is community support worker or start working as hta which is healthcare aid now for people who may be thinking of migrating to alberta i'm going to do a video that is going to 
um, um, set you up or now you can start working as ATA year without having to, you know, um, go to school because if you don't have the right information, you may think you have to go to school like six months or three months course. You don't need all that if you have the right information. All you have to do is register. I'll, I'll give you, I'll do a video on how you can register and all that so that you can start working as ATA. At least that's still better than not doing anything or working in the store. ATA, you're still kind of working in the hospital setting, you know, you're still going to be caring for people. You're still going to feel like you're caring for people rather than when you have to stand in the store for eight hours, work in Zara store, work in ASOS store, and work in all these stores, um, Walmart and the likes, and you are not really doing, um, you're not seeing, like you're not seeing your same per se. Yes, so it's a good way to start when you come to Canada. Start at eight while you process your LPN. Now, uh, I just want to check if there are other questions here. Otherwise, I'll move on to the next thing. Anyways, I wouldn't want to really waste a lot of time here. So what I would do is that you can, um, check it out yourself now when you get your advisory report after getting my advisory report what happens that's what i'm going to be doing now uh we'll just go for a quick break and then um, one tell me what you like about today's video and all of that yeah so once you get your nice report the reports may throw your balance a little but don't be despair and don't uh, you know let that trouble you because usually you will get what we call not comparable meaning nurse will tell you that Whatever education you're bringing from Africa or from Nigeria, from anywhere, is not comparable to the nursing standard in Canada. That is expected. Or they can give you somewhat comparable. But I have not seen anybody with that kind of report, somewhat comparable. The highest I've seen is a little over 50%. And that was why I said in my past one video that you should ensure that everything you were taught in nursing school is actually included in your uh, in the forms you're submitting to NAS. You can't afford not to do that because it's going to have a lot of impact on your report. Yes, yeah, so when you get that not comparable, uh, it means that they will now give you two options that you either, um, actually they won't give you the option immediately, you'll be transferred to Kana, and Kana is the body regulated RN here, so Kana will give you a decision of, they might not give you a decision immediately actually, but they'll give you a decision to either go to school for a bridging program or write an exam. I'll come back to that later. But let us talk about LPN, because LPN is the shortest way to practice. You can actually start practicing as LPN why you wait to sort your RN. So for LPN, remember you're going to be choosing two nursing jurisdiction under NAS, that's RN and LPN. So what happens, L LPN will also send you an advisory report. Now this advisory report will let you know what they feel or think about your everything you have submitted, your application. The one, what I got was somewhat comparable. I mean, what I was bringing from Nigeria is somewhat comparable to the licensed practical nursing standard of Canada. Hence, they will not give you an automatic, um, you're not going to get an automatic, uh, what is it called now, uh, permit to practice. You're going to have to go through some things. For me, remember I said everybody's journey is different, but you can use mine as a yardstick. For me, immediately I got my report. I'm trying to look through my laptop for you. Um, they told me to submit some things, job description, my resume, and they, you are going to be required to fill what we called what we call um, a self assessment. You're going to be required to fill a self assessment. So I bring I brought my laptop up so that I don't have to be looking down. Now for the self assessment, it's actually the self assessment is actually um, kind of um, it's a lot. It's bulky. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. It took me three months to fill my self assessment. My husband was so tired of me. But I was, I don't know, probably I was pregnant then and a lot of them, I'm just like angry, like, why do you want me to fill this whole thing? It's a lot of pages. I can't even, it's actually 13 pages, but that 13 pages, you are going to have, like, you are having, like, um, three questions per page or two questions per page. And per each question, you're going to be answering, like, you're going to give yourself some ratings. The kind of question I have, okay, one is saying demonstrate knowledge of therapeutic communication you're going to demonstrate and i feel what you submit here has an impact on the courses they'll ask you to do because you're still going to do some online courses before you take your jurisprudence exam then they are also asking utilizing the nursing process um apply knowledge theory in the provision of care like how do you do that right then um complete assessment using a systematic approach in a holistic about so psychosocial it's a lot of question actually so what i'm going to do is for people that are already on the verge of doing their NAS or at the verge of getting their LPN, if you want this question, I think they don't change it. That's what I feel. So if you want this question, I'm going to um, drop my email, send me an email. I'll email it to you. Probably you can just use it to practice, know what you want to write. Because I, 
till now i don't know what to feel i just feel whatever was coming to my mind not that i have any mood for i just feel anything coming to my mind so at least when you read ahead you can feel better maybe it helps your your processes and that's why i'm making videos like so that you don't make the mistake i made yeah so afterwards when you fill and submit everything they require then they will send you some modules they'll send let me see if i can still find my modules they send you some modules to do or to sort um you're going to do modules on um nursing um, documentation medication i did like eight or nine modules and you must get 80 percent on each module you must you cannot score less than 80 if you score less than 80 you're going to attempt it again it's going to be the modules can be you can have some can have 20 pages 30 pages 50 pages per module then you do the question you can gamble actually like go and do the question without even reading the module fully but i like to be detailed so i read the module the ones i know i cannot really comprehend like that i have to take jota to write them that i feel okay this question if i'm an examiner i'll probably ask this question so i took them down and thankfully all my modules most of them i got them at one sitting so after you're done with the modules they may require you to submit another verification or registration because i think what they do is once the vor you are you, are, you use for nas is over six months they probably will need another verification or registration so be prepared to contact nursing council again you're going to spend money that one no doubt you have to spend all oh, laughing oh you have to use money to look for money right yeah so you're going to spend money so you're going to uh, do that they may require you to submit other things from your place of work in nigeria that's why i said use somebody that you can trust use an employer you have a rapport with don't use an employer that is it doesn't like helping people hmm. you have to be tactful about the kind of employer you're submitting to nas please i said this in part one video go and watch it so once you're done with all of the models and submitting everything they need you to do and remember that the I, you're not going to write on that ielts because the ielts you use for nas probably will still be counting for this i didn't write any other ielts i did my ielts in canada and i passed once i know some people may say okay how did you do it i'll probably make a video on that but you know i can't say everything in one sitting yes because you're going to get bored yourself if i talk for over one hour imagine the my highest video on youtube is 25 minutes I think this may be up to, uh, going to that amount too. Yeah, so once you're done with all that, you're going to do a jurisprudence exam. About the jurisprudence exam, for the jurisprudence exam, it's an open book exam. You're going to pay $50 for it. It's going to be four hours exam. But as much as it is an open book exam, if you're not careful, you're going to fail the jurisprudence exam because I've seen people who failed that jurisprudence exam. Um, be, and the reason why I'm saying if you're not careful is the question that we're going to ask you is not a question like, oh, I'll, I'll quickly go into because these are things you'll have treated previously in your models. I'll quickly go into them. Sometimes you're not, you don't even remember where that particular module is. So you are a lot confused, like, where can I find this answer? So you have to read your modules very well. Yes, because before you start looking for where can I find the module, four hours is gone. So you have to really, really be smart about it. So once you pass your experience exam, you will be issued what we call a um, pra provisional practice permit to practice as a licensed practical nurse in Abada. Now, or wherever you are. And something you must know is that the bodies regulating nurses differ according to the province that you are going to. And that's why I said I'm going to make another video on the best provinces for nurses where I will explain everything to details. So for Canada, for Alberta rather, I mean, Alberta, for Alberta, what we have here is um, we have CLPNA. They may bear another name. They may have another name in Ontario. They may have another name in Saskatchewan. is um according to the province that you are settling or the province that you intend to set to and that is one of the reasons why you have to stick up to youtube channels like this so that you can get um information as i get them because i try to get those information i can bring it to you trust me after you get your provisional permit please start working like if it's possible for you to get a job the next day that's the i didn't start working immediately i got my my son i have my family and there was no help here so i had to chill for my son but if you and another thing you should know with canada is that practicing nursing here requires you to actually sit down and talk to your partner your partner should be in the know that the nursing system in nigeria is not the same as the nursing system in canada 
it, it takes a lot so that means if your partner is somebody that need that will, has a job that is really demanding uh you may not work for two because nothing is demanding so that means one person must have a job that is a bit flexible and one person will have a very demanding job in fact generally in canada both couple cannot have demanding jobs you're going to put your family at risk especially your children and the government will not find that funny they might take your child from you so you have to sit down and talk about these things getting your nursing license in canada is a sacrifice for the family that you must be willing to take sometimes for example i have people currently in Alberta right now that wants to migrate to new brunswick new brunswick is another province but they feel they'll get their license faster there so that means you have to talk to your husband your husband has to move he has to change jobs you have to change your children's school so it's a lot of thing i don't want to draw too much into that when i talk about best provinces for nurses i will talk really about that so when you get your when you get your license go and start working it will help you to ace the final exam that is a cp nre exam that's the, the cp nre exam is a final exam you're expected to write to qualify as a licensed practical nurse in canada and when you write this exam that is when you get a permanent permit because remember you're going to have a provisional or temporal permit so go and start working because it will help you if you're using your niger system brain and intelligence to answer cpr nre exam you're going to feel woefully the exam is easy to pass and also easy to fail so you have to really know what you're doing to pass the exam i am also still going to make video on how to ace your cpr nre exam um that would not be that'll be next year but to watch out for that video if you are intending to write the exam watch out for that video even if you're not going to write in january or whenever i post the video because i'll post this some probably january i should post the video make sure to watch it it will really help you to prepare trust me so once you start working it helps you to prepare it helps you to get accustomed acquainted to the canadian system and you can answer their questions better there are a lot of things that we don't do in nigeria that they do here for example in nigeria we for older adults 70 80 and above we give them infusions via the vein intravenously in this space we give them subcutaneously because we do not want to load the heart too much with a lot of fluid so when I when I saw that we call it license. When I first saw that here, I was really shocked. Like you mean, I can't give this woman uh, intravenous infusion. You can't. It's gonna be a sin. So imagine you have a patient under your care that needs um, more fluid. Is not taking enough, and then you're looking to set up intravenous line. You're gonna look like a fool. So that's what I said that you need to really settle down and make sure you ask questions as you start your job. So um, afterwards, you're going to do your CPNRA exam, and that will be it for LPN. Now for, for RN, Kana will get back to you. And once they do, they are going to tell you to either go for bridging course in Saint Maria, Saint, um, uh, Montreal, sorry, Montreal University, or uh, you are going to or you are going to write an exam that qualify you to now take NCLEX. You cannot just take NCLEX straight in Canada. No, it is not done. So you're going to, you can choose to go to the bridging course. If you choose to do bridging course, know that you may not get the space on time because currently that's the only university we have offering the bridging course. So it's a lot of struggle for people to get into the bridging program. And for my inquiry, it takes like 14 months. You're going to have classes, let's say two, three times in a week. And imagine living far away from the school. So that's why I said nothing is a lot of sacrifice here. But it's okay, we'll get there. There is nothing beautiful that does not come with sacrifice. That you must know <laughs> so that you can prepare yourself, you know. Yeah, so if you choose to write the ANAP exam, if you pass the exam very well, you're going to get a practice permit as RN. The practice permit is also temporal, just like the LPN. Then once you pass the NCLEX, you get a permanent permit. Now, when I talk about um, the provinces for nurses, best I'll, I'll talk about um, what you expect. I'm also going to do another video on ANAP exam. See, I have a lot of videos for you on this channel. I have a lot of information to pass, but trust me, I can't pass everything all at once. So that's why you have to stick around to this channel. Like everything, we have everything you will need. All the juicy information about health, lifestyle, family, motherhood, about nursing in Canada, immigration, everything. So this is a channel you don't want to subscribe to. You have to click on that subscribe button. So if you have questions for me as regarding what we discussed today, let me know in the comment section. 
even if you have my whatsapp number please don't come to my whatsapp <laughs> ask me in the comment section i'll be willing to answer your question in the comment section and i think that should be it on today's episode uh let me know if you have question like i said i don't think I'm, I'm trying to see if i'm not missing out anything but i don't think i've spoken about healthy and rn i've spoken about everything so i don't think and the only thing we're going to now discuss is how you're going to pass your anap exam if you're choosing an anap exam what the bridging courses look like yeah i will be i'm talking about that too yeah so i'll see you guys some other time thank you very much for staying here if you actually watch this video to the end let me know if you do let me know if you watch this video to the end in the comment section. I might just have something for you.